Oh, that hits the spot. Welcome to Sorta Like This. I'm Jordan, and today I'll be breaking down how I created this stylized, gritty revolver smoke shot using Cinema 4D, X Particles, and Redshift. We are going to go over this scene and explore the simulations, animations, materials, and lighting used to create this slow motion revolver shot with smoke. We will also briefly touch on the modeling. This scene was originally just a hard surface modeling practice project. I had no plans to do anything with it when it was finished, but at some point I decided I wanted it to function. I remember seeing the intro sequence to the Netflix show The Punisher. I thought it'd be fun to do something in a high contrast style. So I lit this scene in a high contrast monochrome scheme. I threw some X particle smoke sims on it and I animated it. Now that we have a background on this project, let's break it down. Let's briefly talk about the modeling process. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here. I'm not confident enough in my modeling skills yet to do an in-depth dive, but that's what practice is for, right? To build up those skills. And that's how this project started out as, a modeling practice project. I'm of the mindset that I try to model everything myself, or at least main subjects. I know not everyone's like that. I'm not saying you should be like that, but it's just how I am. I'll buy models for background pieces or overly complicated objects that I don't think I can model myself. I started by using the polygon pen tool to trace the frame from a reference image. From here, I extruded it to give it depth and threw it into a symmetry object. I moved some points around to give it the basic shape and then threw it into a subdivision surface. I did the same thing with the grip. I traced the grip with the polygon pen tool, threw it into a symmetry object, and then into a subdivision surface. From here, I used the cylinder to model the barrel. It's mostly just some extruded areas. The cylinder is, well, a cylinder that I model details on and use the bowl objects with a cloner and cylinders to create the chambers. The last part of this stage was the cylinder hinge that moves when the cylinder is pushed out to be loaded and unloaded. I'm not really sure what it's called, so I just called it the cylinder hinge. This was just a section of the frame that I made a separate object and modeled to fit the shape. For stage three, I added the ejection rod. This is just a cylinder with details modeled into it. I also used a bool object to put a hole in the cylinder hinge object. For stage four, I added the trigger and the hammer. The trigger was traced with the polygon pen tool from the reference image, then extruded just so I can have the proportions correct. I also extruded into the frame so there's a little bit of space between the trigger and the frame. The hammer was modeled from a cylinder. I also extruded into the frame to make a space for the hammer. At this point, I model a cylinder release push button and a rear sight. Both of these just started out as cubes and then I just modeled them into shape. I made adjustments to the frame as needed, like a space on the top for the rear sight. I wasn't trying to replicate the reference image exactly, I just used it to get a rough idea and shape and to make sure things were kind of in proportion. From here, the revolver modeling was pretty much done besides some touch-ups. Let's head over to the main scene and talk about the model animations. To make the model function, I needed to animate a few parts. The trigger, the hammer, the cylinder, and a projectile. I watched a couple of videos to get the order of operations. As the trigger moves back, the hammer also pulls back and the cylinder rotates. Once it reaches a certain point, the hammer falls faster and then the trigger recovers. Then a projectile leaves the barrel at slow motion. I know in reality this order isn't correct. The bullet would leave long before the trigger recovers, but I thought it looked better this way. These animations were all done with keyframes on the rotation, and then I just played with the curves a little bit. The bullet was also keyframed, but I made the animation Olympic. The bullet animation was made during the smoke simulation, which we'll cover next. Keep in mind you will need to know the timing of your animation to simulate the smoke at the correct timing. Let's talk about those sims now. The simulation scene file is actually where I modeled and animated that bullet. I knew I wanted it to collide with the simulated smoke, so I animated it in this scene, saved it as an Olympic, and then imported it into the main scene. The simulations only needed the barrel, frame, and cylinder objects, so that's all I imported into this scene. 
we're going to start talking about the barrel smoke simulation. To do this, I used X particles and XP Explosia. I put an XP collider and an Explosia FX collider on the barrel. I then put an emitter inside the barrel that shot out some particles. I set the emissions to the shot and it would shoot at frame 95 with a count of 170 particles and it would last 6 frames. Let's take a quick look at that. I added a drag modifier with a custom density value so the particles slow down quickly. Let's take a look at that with the drag modifier on. I then added a flow field. This flow field is set to a long splines. To make the shape I wanted, I used a circle spline and a cloner set to radial. Once I got the size I wanted, I did a current state to object and a connect and delete to make a single spline object. I then fed that spline object into the follow spline settings in the flow field. And now when I play it back, the particles circle back around making it look like a mushroom cloud shape. This simulates the hot gases cooling very fast as they exit the barrel. From here I added a turbulence modifier to add a little bit of randomness. I threw in an Explosia FX source tag on the particles, and then in the extended data tab in the emitter object, I added some temperature, smoke, and fuel. I also added an Explosia FX collider tag to the bullet. I now added an Explosia FX object and adjusted some of the settings until I got a shape I liked. Once I got the shape I like for the smoke simulation, I cached it out saving them as VDBs to import back into the main scene. Let's go talk about the cylinder smoke simulation now. The cylinder smoke was simmed in a very similar way. I have an emitter that shoots particles back at the cylinder that bounce off of it because of the collider tag on the cylinder. Let's play that back and see what it looks like. I then added a drag modifier so they slow down quickly just like the barrel particles. Let's take a look at that. To add a little bit of randomness I added a turbulence modifier. I then added an explosion source tag on the particles and just like before I gave them some temperature, smoke, and fuel data. I added an Explosia FX object and a cache object. I played around with the Explosia settings until I got a look I liked, and then exported the sim as VDBs to import into the main scene. Let's take a look at what it looks like. Back in the main scene, I added Redshift volume objects, and linked it to those VDBs I made before. I went to the Animation tab, selected Simple Animation, and Detect Frames. This way it plays back as an animation now. In the Display Options, I set it to Points, and I set it at about 250 points. Now if we scrub through, we can see the Display Point showing where the smoke will be. Before I go over the material for the smoke, I need to go over the lighting. There are quite a few lights in this scene. The thing I wanted to mention though, was that all of them, but the point light named Ray Light, have all their volume sliders set to zero. This is because I didn't want them to influence the fog or the environment I have in this scene. And the reason I bring that up is because this influences what our smoke will look like. Only that one point light will influence how our smoke looks. And this light is keyframed to get brighter for the first few frames. The rest of the lights are just there to create reflections I liked on the model. If I start the IPR now, we can't see any smoke. That's because we don't have any volume materials on our volume objects yet. Let me add those back on, and then I'll go over what settings I decided to use. We're going to go over the barrel smoke first. In my scatter channel, I have it set to density. I 
I found that the scatter coefficient of 1.23 worked and I darkened the light end of the scatter ramp. Absorption is set to 0.21 and the fuel is selected in the color channel. I actually don't really know what the color channel does, but I just like the way this looked. In the emissions channel, I have it set to heat and the scale is set to 0.05 and the tint is set to just above middle gray. In the advanced tab, I have the shadow density scale set to 4. I don't think it actually still does much currently, but it was just left over from when I was experimenting. So just in case it does something for you, I thought I would mention it. For the cylinder smoke, the settings are very similar, just some minor changes like the scatter and absorption coefficients. For both materials, the emission channel is what we mostly see. The last thing to go over are some of the materials for the model. I'm only going to touch on some of the main ones, like the frame, barrel, and grip. Let's start with the frame material. I started off with a lead preset. I know, it's not accurate, but it had the look that I wanted for this. The rest of the material are a bunch of blends for the bump and roughness. Let's start with the roughness. That starts off with a scratch map that is sent into a UV projection node. A max on noise node is then sent into a ramp node to control it, then into a multiply node. This way the scratches only show up in some areas. I then have a dirt map sent into a UV projection node, then into a few ramps to control the strength of it. Then it is added to the scratch maps. Below that I have a curvature node multiplied with a noise node to give me a mask to add edge wear and scratches. I have that multiplied with a dirt map to give me a rough looking map for edge wear. Now that edge map is multiplied with the overall roughness map from before and then sent into the roughness channel. The bump map blender are those same roughness maps from before, but sent into bump nodes. From here I can control how much of each bump map I want. And finally we have the finished material for the frame. The barrel is based off the same material, so I won't go over it all again, but I wanted to show you some differences. I added a material blender to give the front of the barrel a dirty, burnt look. It starts with this ramp node set to vertical and adjusted so only the very front of the barrel is white. I added some noise to make the transition rougher. I also used a curvature map multiplied with a noise node to make a map for some of the concave areas. This is used as a mask for the burnt material which is just rough, diffused, dark material. The main material from before and this burnt material are piped into the material blender and that edge mask from before is piped into the blend color to make the final material for the barrel. The last little bit I wanted to go over was the grip material. The grip is made up of two different materials. One is applied through a polygon selection. The main grip material starts with a plastic preset. I have a curvature node selecting some convex areas of the grip. That is multiplied with a noise node to give me a bit of a mask to add wear. That is sent through a ramp node to tint it and then sent to the diffuse color channel. The curvature is also sent through another ramp node to control it a little bit more and then sent into the roughness channel. I also just have a little bit of noise sent into the bump channel. And with that, we have our main grip material. The last part of this is a similar material, but without the wear maps. It is just the grip material sent into a bump map to make it look like it has some texture to it. And now check out how nice it all looks together. And with that, we broke down all the important elements in this scene. 
We went over all the stages I went through for the modeling process. We went over how the smoke was simulated. We went over the lighting for the smoke and the environment. And we talked about the materials for the smoke and the revolver. Thanks for watching. I hope you were able to find something useful out of this. If you need any more details about any techniques or elements used here, please let me know and I'll do my best to answer them. If you did find it useful or entertaining at least, please consider subscribing, liking, or commenting on the video. It helps a lot. I have a few more scene breakdowns planned for the future, and a lot more planned as well. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time on Sorta Like This.